So we've identified in the left-hand diagram with the two solid red dots were the competitive outcome and the monopsony outcome for this input market. Now we need to discuss the implications for surplus. Uh, surplus to the demander, surplus to the supplier, and social surplus. I'm going to use the, the graph on the left to derive the table in the bottom right. Let's start with competition. On the graph on the left, the competitive point is C. The surplus of the demander I claim is A, C, G. That's because it's the area above the price line and below the demand curve. And the demand curve is AC and the price line is GC. So it's that triangular shaped area. It wouldn't be a triangle if the demand curve weren't exactly a straight line. But it's more or less a triangular shaped area, A, C, G. So that's that. Now let's get the next one, the surplus to supplier. That's the area above the supply curve and below the price line. So the supply curve is EC, the price line is GC, so the surplus to the supplier is GCE. So that verifies that point. And finally, the social surplus, which is the sum of that. So the sum of ACG and GCE is ACE. So all that area is the area of social surplus that you get under competition. Next, how about under monopsony? So in a monopsony, remember point D is the point that connects WM, which is the monopsony quantity, and point F, which is the monopsony price. So let's work on this, the surplus to the demander. So that's the area below the demand curve and above the price line. The demand curve is AB. I don't say AC because you only go to WM because we're at the monopsonist. And the monopsonist, uh, the monopsonist decreases, doesn't buy as much because as much as the competitive firm. WM is less than WC because the monopsonist knows that unfortunately the more he buys, the more he has to pay per unit, not only for the marginal unit, but for all the units. And so he cuts back on the buying. The competitive firm, by contrast, th uh, thinks that the supply curve is horizontal. It actually isn't, but that's what the competitive firm thinks. And so it doesn't have that hesitancy to buy water. So the, the monopsonist uh, buys less water than the competitive firm. So that's the reason why when I talk about the demand curve for the monopsonist, I'm only talking about A, B. Right, so the surplus to demand is below the demand curve and above the price line. The price line is FD. So we're looking at below the demand curve and above the price line. That's what we're looking at, that area. And you can so you can see that that area is A, B, D, F. Next the surplus to the supplier, which is also called rent under monopsony. So now, the monopsonist is the only buyer of water. So it turns out he can really squeeze the sellers of water, the suppliers of water. They don't, they're not, they're not gonna get a lot of rent in this situation. Let's see how much. It's the area above the supply curve, below the price line. The supply curve is ED, the price line is FD, so the area between those are, is FDE. That explains the surplus to the supplier. And social surplus. Well, the social surplus is the sum of those two, which is going to be A, B, D, E. Now, looking a little bit at the comparisons, let's look at what the demander gets the first line of the table, surplus to demander. Under competition, it's ACG, and under monopsony, ABDF. Actually, it's not easy to tell there uh, which is bigger and which is smaller. Although we know that if that 
the demander would like to have a monopsony, he's the only he'd be the only buyer. And so we actually know that the inequality goes this way, but it's not obvious from the picture. Uh, the next line, the surplus is the supplier. Under competition, it's GCE, and under monopsony, it's FDE. GCE is definitely bigger. So the monopsonist is certainly functions to squeeze the people that supply him with the thing he's buying. And social surplus, ACE is obviously larger than ABE. Why has social surplus shrunk? Well, social surplus has shrunk because the monopsonist hesitates to buy water because he knows that the supply curve of water is upward sloping, so the more water he buys, the more he's going to have to pay. His hesitation causes his amount of water to be down here, whereas the competitive industry's amount of water is way up here. In turn, that's what causes the the amount of social surplus to shrink from from the ACE, the big triangle, to ABDE, which is the smaller region. You can see that the there's a deadweight loss, and here's the amount of deadweight loss. This is the deadweight loss to monopsony. Clearly there are lots of similarities and analogies between the monopoly case and the monopsony case. That's why we were able to do the monopoly case the monopsony case uh, quicker than we did the monopoly case. <coughs> but of course there are differences in the way that the, the whole geometry works out. <coughs> so this com completes our analysis of of monopsony. And it also completes our analysis of input markets. <coughs>